Okay, so you have an important club show coming up. What do you play? And better yet, how do you assure that your set goes down in history? Now, I think the first thing you really need to do is set an intention. Now, that means you first need to establish what you want and why you want it so you can head towards your goals. So for instance, right, if you want to play live, a really good intention may be to play a set that people are going to really respond to, like to create a really cool atmosphere in the room. And from that show to ideally get more opportunities to play at that same event or with those promoters. Now, to achieve this there are many layers and many things to consider so firstly you're going to want to play the right kind of music for that event which number one means research now the best way without a doubt to research is to go to the event before you plan to play and see what kind of music that the people there are responding to however if you can't physically get to the event alternatively right you could find out what DJs are on the lineup check out their SoundCloud pages and just kind of get a feel for what kind of music that they play and also talk to the promoter about what they expect from you too. Now, trust me, right? Turning up with the right kind of music is half of it. And if you skip this step and make an assumption about what the event plays or what they expect from you, you could easily make an ass of yourself, right? And it's gonna equal you feeling shit about your performance and that most likely means no repeat shows. Okay, so 100% research the event as much as you can in advance even become a regular of the event get to know the other djs immerse yourself in the community and at very least right be clear on the genre that that event specializes in okay now once you know the genre right you're going to want to get as many tracks as you can okay and i'd be thinking a balance between all-time classics of that genre, okay, as playing the nostalgic card seldom fails, okay, but you're also going to want to have all the latest releases, okay, again, for that specific genre. Plus, I may even get some more commercial options just to be on the safe side. Now, what I mean by that is, okay, let's say a venue has me booked to, let's say, do a tech house set, okay, which honestly, Tech house these days, it's probably considered one of the more commercial house genres, and it's definitely very, very popular. It's being played worldwide in clubs and festivals. And let's say, okay, I'll turn up with the latest Beatport chart, okay? And perhaps on the night, let's say my set isn't getting the best response. Now, it usually means I may be taking myself too seriously and playing bangers and stuff that DJs may love, right? But perhaps the crowd there just want to have fun. They want to hear familiarity, music they can sing along to, okay? Now, this happens so much more than you think. So when I was basically playing every single week, okay, not only would I keep my finger on the pulse when it comes to the Beatport chart, no doubt, okay, but I would also be checking out the more commercial dance charts too, just because I got burnt so many times. So for instance, right, let's say you're from the UK, okay? You could Google UK dance chart and just see what comes up now sure some of these tracks are also going to be in the beatbot chart okay but the dance chart shows you what's being pushed on the radio okay and even what people are buying and if the going gets tough okay and people aren't responding to your set Honestly, you're going to be surprised how much like making the music a little bit more fun and upbeat and familiar can improve the atmosphere in the club big time. And quite often by having some more commercial tracks just to fall back on, okay, or even to include in your set in the first place, okay, it can, you know, honestly, it can transform the atmosphere in the club big time. So be mindful when playing. It's not about giving people a music lesson on all the latest beatboard hits, okay? It's about balancing the familiar with the cool. And then if you can add regular like doses or splashes of like classics and anthems, you know, that people grew up with, then honestly, you can become a headliner in your own right. And people are going to line up to watch you play as your sets become magnetic and you attract more people, okay? You get more shows and your career and side hustle as a DJ, right, is going to take off as you're always prepared for every eventuality and you're able to move your sets with an intention, right, of uniting like-minded people through killer atmospheres that people rave about. And better yet, people are returned to every single week to be part of so that's just all about you know having that nostalgia having commercial stuff just in case but also having the cool stuff and finding a balance and being able to flow between those stars by reacting to the crowd on that night
Okay, so number two, once you have a bunch of tracks, how do you organize them now in truth, right? This is a full video in itself and honestly, I dive so much deeper into every topic you'd ever need to be club ready and even to feel club ready in my club ready DJ course, but just quickly, right? I usually organize my music by genre and also by event, okay? So in this case, let's say I'm playing at a club and I'm doing a tech house set, like I'd have a folder, like with all the tech house music, I'd have all the different genres that I actually play. And then because I'm doing a tech house set, so I've got a tech house folder, but I'd probably couple into that bass house as well. So I'd also have a bass house folder and I'd also have a folder with commercial dance with all the kind of like, you know, full of all the stuff that people are listening to and what's popular. And then I may even have a folder called classics and anthems full of stuff that people grew up with like Sandstorm and stuff like that, okay? But then I would take it all a step further, okay? And for the event that I'm preparing for, I'd probably make a best of playlist. And I'd probably even call that playlist whatever the event's called. So let's say I'm playing at Mars or something, okay? Mars, I'd say, could even date it. And I'd just fill that with a best of all those folders. So I'd take all the best tech house, all the stuff that I'm kind of thinking, oh, that would work well at this event. So I might take some from the tech house, the best of put into that event playlist, take some of the base house stuff, I'll put some of the commercial stuff in there. Kind of like, you know, maybe put some anthems in there as well, of course. And then from that, Okay, then I could go about organizing, which I'll talk about in a second. But before I go into organizing and how to actually prepare that playlist, just quickly, I'd probably be aiming to have at least 100 tracks in that playlist. And don't get me wrong, let's say you're only playing for an hour, you might only be able to get through like 20 to 40 tracks, okay? But you want to have options to choose from. So I'd make one playlist for that event and I'd just try and fill it with whatever song I go to. I know people are going to like it, okay? So it's just full of stuff that's like perfect for the event that I'm going to play, full of like really, really good music. Okay, so number three. So now you have your master playlist, okay? The real question is, how do you prepare it, okay? So for instance, do I set cue points and map exactly how much of each track I plan to play? Or do I sort out some kind of arrangement like in advance, knowing like which songs I'm gonna play in the exact order? And when I factor into that, how important is mixing in keys? So let's just start with cue points, okay? So firstly, there are different types of cue points you can set. So you've got memory cues, which relates to all pioneer gear, okay? Especially club gear and also hot cues. Now, I personally use memory cues to map the best parts of each track as hot cues. It's more to jump around the track real time, okay? Now, one quick thing to note though, when playing in clubs, the older gear may not have hot cues, okay? Now, again, cues and mapping playlists, it's all covered in my course big time. So if you feel you'd benefit from a more organized and formal approach, 100% check out the link in the description below as my club ready DJ course. Honestly, man, it's, it's really raved about. It's like, really popular actually and it covers everything you will ever need to DJ in the one complete package okay anyway the advantage of setting cues in advance is you can make all your transitions line up and you can always assure that you're playing the best parts of each track so for instance right by setting cue points I can do more creative transitions like replacing the drop or double drops or like mashups on the fly and it basically opens up a world of creativity and I personally feel setting cue points okay in advance can take your set from good to fucking amazing man but the downside of it is having the discipline to actually sit there and set them okay and you'd be surprised how many people don't set cue points at all okay now personally I think it depends a little bit, like, you know, kind of on the genre of music that you're playing. So for instance, right, some techno, you know, it's probably best to layer and not use cues and you can feel your way through the mix. But when mixing tracks that have specific parts, okay, by setting cue points, you can always assure that you play the best parts of each track. And this keeps the set moving. And in my opinion, it's, it's more exciting like for you and your audience, okay? Now, if you want more on exactly where and how to set cue points and stuff, check out my Club Ready DJ course, as this is one area I explore big time. And this can be honestly a very big game changer for you, especially if you wish to take your DJ sets from okay to like outstanding very quickly. Okay. So so whether or not you decide to set cue points right, the next question is, 
do you put your tracks into a specific order? So for instance, let's say you're playing for one hour and you're planning on playing roughly three minutes of each track, right? You create a playlist of 20 tracks, put them in order and then play that playlist from one to 20. Now you'd be surprised how many people do this, but if you ask me, this is risky, okay? And no doubt, this is where the majority of DJs go wrong. See, what happens, right, if the set that you're prepared for isn't working? Or perhaps the DJ before you played half your tracks. Now, trust me, right, you need options and you need to be flexible. So instead of having 20 tracks, prepare 50, okay? And the tracks that you don't manage to put into a specific order, you can just leave at the bottom of that same playlist as options so you can freestyle if needs be, okay? So let's say I'm playing a set, okay? and I've got my, my order, okay? And let's say I go tracks one to seven, and at track seven, I take it a bit heavier and I clear my dance floor, okay? And I realize, oh, they're not liking the heavier stuff. And let's say on my playlist, tracks eight, nine, and 10, it's more of the same, it's more heavy stuff. Like track seven was like leading into the heavy stuff. To be honest, right, I might then decide, oh shit, if seven doesn't work, they're not gonna like eight, nine, and 10, and maybe I jump to a safer point in my playlist. But wherever I go in my playlist, I could have, like if I've over-prepared that is, I could have options. So all of a sudden, let's say they don't like seven, but I'm thinking, oh, maybe there's a classic, and that could be track 12, and that leads into something else, and I've just got more and more music to work from, and more to pull from, and that's the beauty of being over-prepared. But here's the thing, sure, wherever I go in my playlist, I do have cool combos up my sleeve, but I'm also reading the crowd. And if my playlist is not working at all, then I abandon it altogether and I start testing out tracks to try, try and gauge what they want. And honestly, that's a bit of an art in itself. And I'll link in a video I did, okay, a while back now that was all about saving your ass, right? When shit really goes south, okay? Now, I know it sounds scary to abandon your plan, but trust me, if you stick to a plan that's not working, then the results can be devastating, okay? Now, this in itself is actually a really good reason to save all your past event playlists, okay? Because let's say your playlist for that particular event isn't working. You may have a past playlist that's more appropriate to the vibe in the room that you can revert to if the going gets tough. And I could even be playing, right? And I, then I'm playing and I get reminded of a playlist I might have done like a few weeks ago or even years ago. And I might even jump to that playlist, play a few combos and then come back to my original playlist. But again, it all comes down to being over-prepared, knowing your music, knowing what's popular now, and having options up your sleeve, okay? So this now leads to how important then is mixing in key, okay? Now, yes, mixing harmonically will make your transitions sound more professional, okay? And it's super important when doing mashups on the fly and more creative mixes. But the thing about playing in clubs is, People care more about the overall vibe and the overall track selection, and they may not even really notice your transitions, okay? So let's say, right, I'm playing at an event, and you know, based off the vibe of the party, right, I get an idea for a track. And let's say that track's not in key with the track I'm currently playing, but I feel it go really well now, okay? Fuck it, man, I'll play it anyway. And if it clashes, I can always hide it with advanced EQ methods or even mix into a part of the track where there's less going on, okay? So there's less like potential for it to clash. However, where mixing key really shines is if you don't have ideas. So for instance, let's say I'm playing live, okay? And my set list isn't working and I haven't got any ideas, I'm, I'm going blank, okay? I could always check all the tracks that are harmonically compatible with the track currently playing. And this hopefully gives me ideas like, oh, that's track, that track's in key with what I'm currently playing. It's a big track right now, but I doubt personally I'd ever pick a track just off key alone. It's like key and intuition. And if it was a choice between picking a song from key or intuition, I would choose intuition. And I only really use mixing key if I haven't got ideas, okay? Or if I, again, if I'm pre-preparing, like this is talking about on the fly mixing, but if I'm actually pre-preparing, yeah, sure, I look at keys a lot of the time and it does give me ideas, but when you're reading a crowd, like I said, you've got to sometimes abandon the playlist and mixing key can give you ideas when you haven't got any. Okay, so once I have my tracks in a loose order, I'd probably practice my transitions. And if it was me, right, 
I'd aim to have a few killer combos, okay, in my set list, okay, meaning some transitions that when I play them, people are gonna be like, wow, okay, now you don't need every single transition to be a work of art, as most people care more about your track selection and overall like flow and feel of the set, but a few well-placed killer combos, okay, it can really contribute to the atmosphere in the club. And basically, when you're mixing really well, it earns your admiration from your fans, okay? Now, I remember once, right, I did this transition in the club and the DJ before me, he came up to me and he's like, wow, man, that must have been rehearsed, okay? And yeah, I said to him, yeah, 100% it was. And the, I guess that was the difference between me and him, okay? Because it's one thing to turn up and freestyle, but sometimes when you prepare some combos and that, and like, they're just too good, you know what I mean? Like you're taking risks, but you've, you've practiced it, you've finessed it. And honestly, I guess that's why I was the headliner, okay? But one thing quickly, okay, and that is, I've heard other DJs, even teachers talk about pre-recording mashups and fancy transitions to make their live set easier, okay? And I disagree, okay, with this 100%. DJing is art and half the fun is doing all the cool shit live, okay? Now, it's one thing to pre-plan, but to pre-record fancy stuff, honestly, to make your life easier, it's blasphemy, okay? Don't even, don't even think about it, man. Just raise your standards, become a better DJ. Okay, so once I have some cool transitions and the basis of a playlist, I could just hit the club, but let's say it's a really important show, okay? And you've got time up your sleeve. You could record yourself doing the set, kind of like a rehearsal, okay? As sometimes when practicing, okay, it's very easy to get caught up in the transitions. And by doing so, like let's say you're focusing on each individual transition, you don't get a feel for the overall flow of the set. See, by recording yourself doing the entire set, you can listen back to it and you can hear it, how the audience would. And I find listening back to your rehearsed set in the way that you intended to play it live, it's a great way to find parts where you can basically improve the flow or perhaps even improve some transitions, okay? Now, as part of my Club Ready DJ course, I ask my students post-course to make a mix and to submit it to me so I can give them feedback on it, so, so I can help them to get Club Ready. And honestly, you can tell the difference between the people who have just recorded something on the fly and the people that have worked on their flow and submitted perhaps even a second or third attempt. And I personally find the process of preparing, practicing, and then recording one of the best ways to get super ready for your show. And even if you turn up live and your set's not working and you abandon that playlist, the process itself really helps you to get to know your tracks and it's a really great and efficient and effective practice exercise. See, put it this way, right? I'm pretty sure most Tomorrowland DJ sets, right? They've probably been rehearsed over and over because they wanna make sure that it's perfect. And if you ask me, there's no reason why you can't DJ as good, if not better, than the DJs playing at Tomorrowland because all your time can go into your DJing. As most festival DJs, they're all full-time producers. So what separates you from them is that they've produced their own music, which most likely means they have less time to master their DJ skills, okay? See, this could be one of the reasons, right, that most festival DJs play most of the, the full track, okay? And some festival DJs, play the exact same set in different locations if that festival's touring, okay? Now, here's the thing, right? Playing the exact same set more than once, it's usually okay if you're playing to new audiences. But if you're a resident at a club, okay, sure, you may have some transitions that you love, okay, that you fall back on, kind of like that James Hype losing it a one more time transition, like he does that a lot, right? But you'd need to adjust the set to include new and different tracks if you're playing every week, okay? as the crowd needs some variation week to week. So this again is a video in itself. So let's say you've got a residency and you're struggling to keep your sets original and creative. Let me know and perhaps I could do a video on how to be an amazing resident and how to mix up your tracks week to week, okay? Uh, man, to be honest, personally, I love the playing live side of things, okay? And I've been fortunate enough to play well over 1,000 club shows as I played every single weekend between 1999 and 2017. I'm getting old now, right? So sometimes three events per week. So if you want more industry advice, let me know. 
so is it something I'm really passionate about? And honestly, I doubt you'd find many DJ teachers with as much experience in that area. And I honestly love helping my students to build the confidence to play live. And I love even more hearing and even sharing their success stories. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. And thanks again for all your positive comments and feedback. Honestly, your support means the world to me and I'd love to one day, you know, work with you personally. Anyway, okay, you've got this. Cheers.